Hello and welcome to this special broadcast. Well, during this time of crisis, the time of pandemic, a number of good Samaritans are coming forward to make a difference, to lessen the suffering, to extend a helping hand. While some are providing medical aid, some in their own capacity have gone on to install COVID care centers. Some are distributing rations, while others are working overtime with the community to ease the burden of their respective states. Tonight, viewers, we'll talk to some of these people who are trying to make a difference in their own little way. We are being joined by former India footballer Renadi Singh. Renadi Singh is working relentlessly to arrange oxygen cylinders to help Manipur tide over any crisis. We are also being joined from Imphal by S. Sachidanan Singh, local coordinator, care for Manipur. Dr. Radisha Moinam, President, Manipur Chamber of Commerce and Industry, also joins us from Imphal. Well, all, all Renadi, Radisham and Sachidanand, they all have come together for care for Manipur uh, to provide relief to, to, to supply oxygen or any other medical aid uh, to the people of the state, a very noble initiative. We are also being joined by Professor Laldun Tluanga, Secretary, Central Young Mizo Association from IZOL. The YMA, of course, is uh, working with the community, has been relentlessly working with the community during these testing times. Former Meghalaya Minister and Congress Legislator Amparin Lingdor joins us from Shillong. Lingdor has opened a COVID care center on her, at her own capacity. Also, Joining us from Shillong in a short while from now will be Dr. Kamaljeet Singh Sahadev, General Secretary of the Gurudwara Sri Guru Singh Sabha Shillong. Of course, uh, the Gurudwara Committee has come up, has come up uh, with uh, again a COVID care center where it has 10 oxygen beds uh, for the needy. So well, a lot of people doing a lot of things. Uh, if I can go to Mr. Renati Singh first, well. Uh, New avatar, new avatar for you, uh, Mr. Randy Singh. Of course, we all are aware of your skills on the pitch, on the football field. But of course, this is something that everybody is loving and appreciating. Randy Singh uh, working tirelessly for the people in this time of pandemic. Hi, hi. Uh, if I have to tell honestly, if you are Sachidanan, Da Sachidanan, and Da Radesham, they have been helping whenever. You know, if you see Manipur produce most number of the players and whenever the play and they all come from a very difficult background. And whenever we needed help for those players, they're always there to help. So now a few days back, uh, Das Asidanan called me up and he told me, Renedi, you know, me and few friends from, from Manipur, outside Manipur, uh, from different states and people overseas, friends overseas, we all are getting together to, to help for this big cause. And, and we all know that how many people in, in Manipur especially, how many people are struggling. Uh, it's struggling all over India, but Manipur recently, we have, we have been struggling a lot. People are suffering. So why don't we get all together and, and support these people? And I thought, you know, if, if I can help a, a little bit from my side also, it will be a good help. And the response has been great. A few days back, I put up a, a video on the social media and the people have been supporting and, and like I said, the response is very, very good. And I hope people, more people come out and support so that we can help people who are suffering badly. Uh, Mr. Sachinathan Singh, uh, care for Manipur. Care for Manipur, that is what the initiative is called. Uh, did it happen only in the second wave of the, of, of, of the pandemic? Did it occur to you that something needs to be done and then the initiative started? Mr. Sachinanand, yeah. Mr. Sachinanand Singh, uh, that's uh, this question is for you. If you can hear me, if we can fix the line with Mr. Sachinanand Singh. Okay, we'll we'll we'll, we'll come back to Mr. Singh there. Uh, if I can go to Professor Lalthul Nwanga, uh, Professor, the YMA, 
The YMA has been in the for forefront when it comes to assisting the people of Mizoram in times of crisis. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your activities during the second wave of the pandemic, your, your activities, your work with the community, how, have, how you have been, how the YMA has been reaching out to the community? Uh, thank you very much for giving us uh, this opportunity uh, to speak out what YMA has taken and at what YMA has taken step with regards to this second wave of the COVID pandemic in the state of Mizoram. We are very thankful to know this life for giving us this platform. Uh, in the first COVID uh, pandemic, the central YMA taking, uh, taking up so many steps with regards to helping uh, the needy and in helping the security personnel in the border, helping the state government and all. So we have taken so much of, you know, initiatives in the first COVID pandemic. In the second COVID pandemic, uh, pandemic also, uh, we have taken up, you know, an active step. The state government is forming an, a committee at the village and the local level. We are a part of that committee member, uh, state level, at the state level also, we, we have had two representatives in that committee. Uh, we have taken up those kind of activities. Then uh, in the lo local level tax force or the village level tax force, our central YMA, the leaders of the central YMA are a part and parcel of that committee. So they are lending a helping hand to the needy. Many, brands of, many branches of the central YMA, uh, all together we are having 811 br branches across the state. So those branches are taking up an active steps in helping the needy by providing them rice, vegetables, in terms of money, monetary support we have given to the needy. Then uh, those who are infected with this uh, COVID-19, many YMS are volunteered and help those infected person and brought them to the 4C, that is community COVID care center or Triple C COVID care center, and even in the hospital itself, the central YMA volunteers have brought them, these people, uh, to the hospital. Then, meantime, so let me give you one example. In a family of four, for example, both the parents got infected with this COVID-19. Their their children, no one, no one, no one. There's no one to take care of those kids. So in that, in that situation also, the central YMA is uh, lending, lending a helping hand to those kids and all. Uh, then at the state level, uh, the central YMA is giving active support at its level, at, at their level, at our level best. See, uh, in this chief minister relief and committee also, our representatives are there. So regarding this distribution of the money also, we have taken a, an active step. Then during this pandemic, uh, this hospital, COVID dedicated hospital, the, the one only one COVID dedicated hospital in the state we have, that is ZMC, Zora Medical College. In that hospital also, they are in need of this coffin for the dead body of COVID-19, uh, you know, COVID-19 positive people. So the Central Young Mizo Association uh, notified to all its branches to help out uh, the Zora Medical College Hospital, that is the de dedicated COVID-19 hospital. So the Central YMA, many branches within Izol City, they have donated coffin, especially prepared for this COVID-19 dead bodies. That's a lot of well, that is, uh, that, that's, that that's work well done up, as you know, usual by the COVID YMA once again. Uh, if 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 I can go back to Renati Singh uh, once again, uh, Renati. Uh, well, uh, are we also connected with Mr. Sachinadan Singh? Not yet. Okay. Uh, Renadi, again, uh, how important, how important is it for individuals, groups to also pitch in? Because, uh, of course, in a pandemic-like situation like this, we cannot also completely depend on the government. The government, it's doing its bit, uh, both the state and the center, uh, and also people who can help. It's about cooperation. Uh, it's, it's, it's about working with the community, isn't it? Yeah, I know that, you know, if we all know that, you know, everyone is going through a tough time. Yeah, even the government, the government is trying their best. But I think we individuals, yeah, as, as, and we, we all have to do our bit. And I know, like I said, you know, people, some are in a very difficult condition and some are having tough time, but still they could help. That's why I have been so thankful 
to all our friends who, who, are, who are outside Manipur, who are in this group and who are overseas, they are working so hard and we have got this WhatsApp group and so many messages and they're all trying to, to, to get funding and so that, you know, help uh, from the people so that we can help support the people who are struggling here. And that's, I'm so grateful to see that, you know, it's not easy when, when you're struggling, but you're still, you're still finding out time uh, and money to put in because it's not easy, you know, whatever we, we are doing and the other people's whoever are also helping. So during this tough time for people to come up like this, and this will only create a big unity and it will, it will, it will only do good. And, and I wish, you know, in a few more days, we will be able to raise more money so that we can help more. So, uh, and, I'm, and I'm sure, you know, that all our friends and uh, Sachidanan and Da Sachidanan and Dara Desam, they have been working really, really hard to, to help these people. And with all the support from our friends, like I said, from different states and people overseas. And that's how, and this should go on because it will, uh, this COVID will stay for some time. And, you know, and we don't know when we'll finish. So the more help, the better. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Sachidanan Singh, uh, if you tell us uh, something about how exactly, yeah, yeah, Mr. Sachidanan Singh, if you can tell us uh, something about how exactly you are operating, what kind of help you're extending, uh, how are you uh, ensuring the supply of oxygen, if you could give us some details about your operations. Okay, uh, we will come to Mr. Singh in a while. Uh, if I can go... Okay, uh, Radhesham, Mr. Dr. Radhesham Moinam, President of Manipur, Chamber of Commerce and Industries, also with us. Uh, we are connecting to both of them. But let, let me go to Amparin Lingdo. Amparin Lingdo uh, now. Uh, Ms. Amparin Lingdo, of course, former Minister of Meghalaya. Uh, a very noble initiative undertaken by you, installing a COVID care center in these times of crisis. Uh, what motivated you to do so? Uh, can you tell us something more about the project? Uh, firstly, uh, I would think that at this point of time, uh, the only appropriate thing or action to take or do would be to reach out to the public who are in deep distress. Uh, the speed at which the virus is enveloping Shillong City is, is, is something which is very fearful and very real. Now to wait for the government machinery to kickstart this environment of of positivity where so many families are now being shut down or shut out and remain under containment zone. So we need to now look at what are the things that we need to do. Uh, I have realized one thing after reading so much of literature, after speaking to so many experts that it has become very vital now for Shillong City to segregate the positive cases from the community. There is still so much denial. There is still so much apprehension. There is still so much of the unknown which people feel as they go about dealing with the pandemic. So as an MLA, if I can reach out to such individuals and tell them, that you need not fear because you have to pay for a facility that the government provides. You need not fear that if you are sent there, you will be left to rot on your own with no doctor coming in to check on you and without any proper communication with anyone whatsoever. Uh, I also felt, feel that if there were distractions, facilities available for people going through this bad nightmare of having tested positive. The only way out is for me to start or at least to experiment on a first such uh, project where we ourselves would seek help from doctors and other health medical uh, experts 
and see whether or not we can people regain the confidence that they are at this point of time lacking absolutely uh, if i can go to if i can go to dr radesha moinam uh, dr radesha moinam uh, tell us a bit more tell us a bit more about the care for manipur project uh, how exactly you are extending help uh the supply of oxygen and other medical aids how exactly are you operating how challenging has it been so far uh, what kind of support you are getting uh from like minded people or the government okay thank you very much and uh, for one minute to respond uh thank you about it and then to also share about care for many people are coming so the belief in the diaspora of the strength in terms of resources in terms of their knowledge. In fact, in Manipur, there was a common industry. We've been trying to promote and form a platform for something called the Manipur Diaspora Consortium so that we know where are our diaspora, we have a mapping of data. So when this second wave came into Manipur, the, the need for oxygen was rampant. In a sense, initially, there was shortage of oxygen. And the whole state could be produced about 150 cylinders day time in a day within the space before the whole world closed the climate change development. It was included now, and we knew that we need to support the development, whatever, whatever, we need to support the development. All right, we have to fix the audio. We have to fix the audio with uh, Dr. Radhisham there. Uh, we will also connect to Dr. Kamaljeet, uh, Kamaljeet Singh Sadev. shortly uh if if okay uh if if sachidananda singh if you can hear me mr sachidananda singh uh can you tell us hi no i can okay uh, can i can hear you but not very clear okay we will have to fix the audio there i'll go to amparin lingdo once again amparin lingdo amparin lingdo uh, tell us more about uh, how the how the covid care center how the covid care center would work for which kind of patients is it uh, will there be a doctor on duty uh, tell us t- uh, tell us more about this covid care center that you have set up at your own capacity and b as categorized by the government lawyer where type a are purely uh, non symptom uh, no they don't have any symptoms without symptoms the second category is b where there are mild symptoms and can be treated in home in the home environment the so called home isolation which government is recommending uh, now what is happening is that most of our homes are located uh, disadvantagedly because the khasis by nature are in a habit of sharing bathrooms of sharing a common dining room uh, children's rooms don't have any independent uh, attachments to them so uh, in order that we are able to segregate the positives from the community and send them to a better facility we have started the center how does it work i'm in touch with the urban health center in my in my constituency and uh, we are now trying to accommodate all these individuals who have to be segregated from their family members who have tested negative for example at the moment i have a young father who has two very young minor children and a wife who herself is a health worker now it will be very difficult for this young father to remain in his home because so many other people become vulnerable plus the homes in our communities are very closely located to each other and uh, so these are the kinds of people that i have i also have an 11 year old child whose both parents are now in the negrims facility and the mother being a dialysis patient for many the years now contacted covid likely in one so of the it's, our a, mix, it's uh, a mix it's a mix it's a mix of uh, it's a mix of people so of course asymptomatic she, this, these two asymptomatic two and children. those who one of the child who's 11 uh, years old medical care uh, if if we have dr kamaljeet uh, singh online 
if I can go to Dr. Kamaljit Singh. Okay, uh, well, uh, Mr. Sachidran Singh, if you can hear me, if we have fixed the connection with Mr. Sachidran Singh. Uh, Mr. Singh, uh, can you tell us more, a little bit more about care for Manipur? Uh, well, uh, can you tell us something about your operations at the time being, in, 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 at this moment? Uh, well, I'm not very, I've not heard you very clearly, but uh, if I, I may just say about what we're doing, uh, how uh, Care for Manipur is uh, doing for Manipur. So basically Care for Manipur uh, is formed by a group of people, uh, like-minded people who have come together uh, from diverse communities and uh, different pro profession who uh, cares about Manipur and wanted to do something about Manipur. Thus the uh, you know, group name of the group Care for Manipur was formed. And our main purpose is to uh, you know, is help the uh, frontline workers and the uh, government of Manipur by during this pandemic by providing uh, medical supplies to them. Uh, so in, for this, we are raising funds uh, through our friends, friend circles, and to our uh, known from our you know people who are across the globe. Uh, initially, it started with a few individuals. Uh, now we have organization like uh, Rotary Club of Imphal, Rotary Club of Polo City Imphal. Then we have uh, Manipur Chamber of Commerce and Industry (MCCI), uh, diaspora groups like you know Ken. Uh, which is Knowledge Exchange Network, Boston, USA, also with us. Then we have uh, Manipur Association in Canada, also known as MAC, headquarter based in Toronto. Uh, also, North America Manipur Association uh, from New York, NAMA, have also, will also be joining us. Uh, European Manipur Association, EMA, and uh, NRI Manipuris from UK, Australia, New Zealand, who all have, have contributed for this noble so cause. So that's, you have, you have been able to rope in a lot of people. Uh, Dr. Radisha Moinam, Dr. Radisha Moinam, how important is it, how important is it for individuals, for groups to come together and help the, commun help the community in this time of crisis? And can it be a game changer? So this is a pandemic. Uh, even though they're not, um, uh, you know, Manipuri, but they have uh, lived and born, who have connection with Manipuri, who have roots in Manipur. Their care for uh, Manipur has made us come together. And if we come together, we are doing our bit. There are lots of other groups and uh, organizations who are also, uh, you know, helping the government uh, to save lives of people in Manipur. We are also doing our bit whatever we could in, in whichever ways. Uh, as of now, the need is the oxygen cylinders because uh, the hospitals in, in, uh, in Manipur need more oxygen, more oxygen cylinders. There are three oxygen plants in Manipur, uh, with, but which cannot, as of now, there are three plants. There are more uh, being uh, installed, uh, but right now, since those these plants cannot uh, you know reach the requirement so we the government is sending out cylinders outside the state to fill it and get in so we need more numbers of cylinders so that we can have a buffer stock it takes i was told that it takes three days to uh, you know fill uh, send out uh, fill and come back so in whatever ways we, we could we are doing our best so that we can save lives of people who are you know uh, right now uh, oxygen is the most important thing. Absolutely, we really appreciate uh, uh, people like you coming forward to assist in these times of crisis. Due to connectivity issues that we faced during the show, of course, we couldn't t take a, get a reaction from Dr. Radisha Moinam uh, or, or uh, we are yet to be connected with Dr. Kamal Jit Singh so, Sade. But let me uh, tell our viewers, uh, all of you are doing a very, a very commendable job. Uh, the Shillong Gurdwara uh, body, uh, the Shillong Guru Singh Sabha, uh, Ampering Lingdo, the legislator, 
Care for Manipur, and there are numerous, numerous such organizations who have come forward in this time of crisis. Uh, together we can, that is the mantra during this pandemic. I thank all of you once again for joining me on this show. That's a wrap.